Hi everyone, Rachel Akers here. I've done a few workshops for Creative Active Lives. Um, we're working together to bring you um, some really fun art workshops that you can do at home. Today, I want to show you how to create a dotted tree painting. So I'm going to begin by showing you the tools that you need and, and then I'm gonna start painting and I'll show you how to create it. So first of all, one of the things you need, you don't need an easel. This is just me setting it up here so it's easier to show you. You can actually just lay a piece of paper down on some newspaper on your table. Um, you can use a canvas. So I've got here um, a small canvas that I'm putting on this easel. Um, but as I said, you don't need to do that. You can. You can get them fairly cheaply in little shops um, on your high street or you can order them online if you want to. Um, but you can just use a piece of card or a piece of paper, anything you like. And you can lay it on the table to paint. Or if you're lucky enough to have an easel, you can stand it up like this. The other thing is that you're going to need is a paint palette. This is just an old camping tin that I really like to use. Um, you can use a piece of paper again to squirt your paint onto. I use acrylic paints. So there's a few different types. This one's called Atelier. This one's Winston and Newton. But you can also <clears throat> use tester pots. I picked up these on a clearance sale in B&Q for 10 pence each. And there's some lovely colours. You don't have to do anything expensive. Um, there's another one here called System 3. All of them, acrylic paints are great because the best thing about acrylic paints is that they are water-based, which means that you can just clean off your brushes in water and you don't need any strong smelling chemicals or anything to clean it up. So it's a really, really good paint to use. For making our little dotted tree painting, we're going to need a couple of things. You will need a paintbrush at some point because we're going to do the background with the paintbrush. And then for the dotted trees, there's lots of different ways you can do it. I happen to have these little sponge things that are on the end of a stick. Again, these are really cheap. You can just pick them up really easily from craft stores um, and they make that perfect circle to make dots with. They come in different sizes. so like this or if your mum and dad like to maybe have a glass of wine occasionally some of them come with a cork and they're perfect with the round sections to create your dots you can also use but this will make tiny tiny dots cotton buds so we're going to use all of these to try and create our dotted tree um, but to start with what I want to show you is how we create the background. So what I would like to do is just very quickly and easily pick up my green paint and I'm going to do a little hill that the tree is going to stand on. You don't have to paint all the way around the bottom but just so that it goes right over the edge. And one thing that we need to remember is we need to let the background dry. But with acrylic paint, it's really quite fast. So as you're using it, it will dry fairly quickly. You don't have to wait too long. I clean my brush off with some water. I'm just using a little plastic pot. And oh, this is another thing I've got. This is a very old towel that you can tell I've used a million times over just to dry my brush on and make sure it's completely clean. You can use a bit of kitchen roll now I've got this lovely blue, it's a real pale blue. You can mix this by just using a darker blue. Let's say, let me see if I've got one. I've got this really dark blue, but I could just add some white to it and make a nice pale blue for the sky. This whole canvas needs to be painted in blue. So the sky comes right the way down and it meets the ground. Now, obviously if you have a piece of paper, you don't need to do the edges, but for me, because I have a canvas, I want to make sure it's all painted all the way around. And there you go. So that is the very beginning of our painting. So what we want to do is take a little break, let this dry 
and come back to it later. Within about 20 minutes to half an hour, your background should be dry enough to, um, to work on. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the tree trunk and some of the branches. Now, when I do my tree trunk, you don't have to. You can just use one brown if you want to. But I like to do a kind of mixture of browns because it gives you that idea of, of kind of texture of the tree. Because um, tree bark isn't just one colour. So I'm going to try and use a burnt sienna. I have a, which one was it? wasn't that one. I wanted to use a dark one. This is a burnt umber, which is a really dark brown. And a yellow okra or okra I'm not sure how people say that one um so that we've got a variety of colors to make a really cool kind of tree trunk these are the three browns that I've decided to use and I'm just going to create a tree trunk and I like to use kind of a little bit of each color as I go so can you see there how by using the three different colours, I don't know if you can see, I'll bring it closer to you. Can you see how it's already got texture to it by using three colours on one brush? So it's a fairly simple way of doing it. And you don't have to keep going back and using a bit of this colour, a bit of that colour. I just get a little bit of each colour on the brush. And when I do this, you need to remember that the tree has roots that go into the ground. Now that we've got the tree trunk forming, what we need to do is create some branches. So we're just going to go, oh, I'm going to put a branch coming out here. And the branches kind of have a few bits coming off it and have one coming up here. Now the great thing about a tree is it can be any shape you want it to be. Also, when you've drawn a branch, they have more branches that come off it. You don't need to worry too much about the ends because they'll be covered over with leaves. So all we want to do is put a basic shape of a tree in here. Just like I'm gonna bring this to you so you can see all the different layers in the tree. I wanted to, one thing I might just add in is on our green grass down here, you could choose a different coloured green and just add it in, just blending in these colours to give the green on the bottom a little bit more texture. We can start with our dots. So I've got a variety of colours but you can use you can use one or two colours. You can use lots and lots of colours. Here's all my colours that I've put out here. And I'm going to start by giving this cork a go. I've not tried this before. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. So I'm going to dip it into the purple. And then I'm going to start creating my circles. Oh, that's cool. put them on the edges of the tree, you can put them on the middle, you can put them wherever you like because the leaves are really going to cover a lot of this area. The great thing about this cork is that we've got two sides so I can turn it over and I can say oh let's try, let's try a bit of this orange and I will put, oh, look at that orange, that's a great colour that one isn't it? You might need a few different things to do this because um, you can't always clean off the sponge very easily and use it for a different colour so you might want just a few already lined up. I'm going to try this really cool red with this sponge. I'm going to give this one a go. That almost creates the similar effect to the cork you see so it doesn't matter what you use. But now one of the things you need to remember that if you go over another dot the colours could kind of blend into each other. So if you don't want that to happen, you might want to make, wait for a few things to dry or just don't overlap them. But it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine if you overlap them. And I'm going to get a cotton bud this time. 
I'm gonna add some blue. Now another thing that we could do is put a few little dots down at the bottom as if the leaves have fallen off the trees. And I think it just looks absolutely wonderful. And I really look forward to seeing your creations. I hope that you can post them either to me at Acres of Art or post pictures or to Creative Active Lives. They would love to see your work as well. I think we are very nearly done. Cotton buds, obviously, you just throw away afterwards, but your corks and your little sponges, give them a wash in water, clean them all off, make sure they're all lovely, lovely and clean, and you can use them again and you can make another dotted picture. You can make anything you like. It doesn't even have to be a tree, but this is a really good start and uh, I love it. So I'm going to bring this close up to you so that you can see. I've got this fabulous tree with most wonderful leaves in every colour and it must be autumn because there's some fallen off and landed on the ground. So as I said to you before, I really look forward to seeing your creations and I hope you enjoy doing it as much as I enjoyed filming it and I hope to see you soon. Bye!